Welcome back to the Hooncast episode four. I hope you guys missed us and hope you guys are having a great start to 2024. It's going to be a big one. Hi, guys. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Happy New Year. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a very successful year ahead and we're very excited for what's to come. Yes. So before we start, um, we've got comment below are you team monster or team starbucks <laughs> <laughs> i actually had a poll up the other day and it was quite a close one <laughs> really? so yeah hit us in the in the comments um but yeah let's get let's get into it uh yes. we got a we got a few things we're going to touch on today and it's mostly things that we've come across like the last week or two um you know with new inquiries coming in uh clients want to join and even current clients, a few things that um, obviously will help. Yeah, will help like, how can I say it? Like issues that can get better. Um, so we're going to touch first on um, how, like when to, when is the best time to start with a, with a coach? Because obviously it's a new year. We've got a lot of inquiries coming in, um, people planning the year and um, yeah, when is the best time to start with a coach? So let's get to, to it. it. So for me, um, I, I reckon that, you know, the sooner you can start um, your journey, you know, obviously when you have competing goals, you want to be on stage at some points, you want to start working with a coach as soon as possible. Um, you know, what I've realized over the years that I've been coaching you know, when someone joins, 90% of the time, um, you would need a, a recomp phase. Um, so you can do maybe like an eight-week recomp phase just to tighten the physique up, um, you know, give you a bit, a better, like, clearer picture of, of where um, your body is in terms of, you know, how much muscle there actually is. And then um, from there, transition into... An improvement phase i'd say give or take 16 to 20 weeks and really just work on you know adding more um, muscle tissue to the frame um, refining the look get it more or less um, you know at a better um, foundation kind of for for stage and then from there um, you know you can start working um, well, transition into a prep phase and start working towards, you know, achieving that stage condition. So for me, when someone joins, I'd like to, you know, map it out <coughs> for the next year, kind of, um, so that that person, you know, is able to compete, um, you know, towards the end of the year, um, get their feet wet, um, you know, for stage, get, get the feeling how it is, get a, a real experience, that's for newbies, though, taking into account. Yes, <laughs> of course, from someone that's, you know, looking to start the... the for the first time. Yes, their competition journey. Um, and then they can get experience, stage experience, and see exactly, you know, where they, you know, stack up against the others, you know, um, and see from there, you know, where um, they can improve further on as an athlete. But... Within that first year, I like to work a lot on, you know, setting up the foundations right, especially when it comes to, um, you know, getting that fixed routine in place, you know, getting that mindset that you need, um, you know, to be a, a athlete in the sport, getting your discipline on points, getting obviously whether that's your nutrition, your training, um, your cardio, posing and all of the, those things also come into play okay did you guys <laughs> listen <laughs> um yeah that's pretty accurate so for newbies though and um, that would probably be the case um and also i think for newbies which is important someone because when we talk about newbies like 80 percent of the time it's people that they've been on and off of diet you know dedication and Discipline has been a bit of an issue um, sometimes. So it's very rare that it's someone that's been in a lifestyle for very long 
um, and just obviously wants to transition, even though they're off some of them. So I think when it's newbies like that, the important part of before you're starting a prep, yes, to get the improvements going first and th to get you ready for stage, but also to s first ease them into it and see how their discipline, not like how their discipline is, but to sort of like build on their discipline and to obviously see how they, you know, to teach them or so that they can get Absolutely. stronger in following the plan yes. in a time away from stage. Because <laughs> once prep starts, there's going to be a lot of like hard times, I want to say like your hunger levels are going to be high. And by the time you get to that, you already want to sort of be someone that's very disciplined and, you know, already in it. And it's just going to make the process a lot easier than someone just all out of the blue starting off with a prep and then five weeks in they see like hey, sh it's this too is hard. this is this or then they blame the coach meanwhile it's not actually the coach it's yes I, i'd like to say that that first year is all about teaching yeah you know what i mean teaching them the basics and falling in love with the process also absolutely um it also would determine you know whether um this is something that you can see yourself doing long term because as we know um to prep for stage isn't uh, it's not something that you can just achieve in a few months it is a a more of a a, a long-term kind of goal that you set for yourself and um with that first year you can allow yourself to actually you know gather all the knowledge gather all the information learn how your body works um, you know, learn how to, you know, communicate with your coach um, and all of those factors. Get, you know, your training, get the basics with the training, get the basics with the, with the, with the nutrition. And from there, um, you know, every year after that, you will, you know, just evolve as an athlete. But first year is all about getting the basics right. Yeah. Yeah. And... You know, making sure mm -hmm. that you got a good coach and then sticking with them because yeah, it really takes important. time. That's, you know, things are not going to happen overnight, even though we all want it to. Um, but the more the more your coach can learn how your body responds and how you how you work and, you know, move with the whole process with you, the, the better for your future. Trust me, because every time, you know, these coach hoppers every time they have to start over the coach needs to start over so um everything basically starts from fresh but yeah for for more advanced athletes that's been in the game some time it might obviously be different here um on when to start over coach but i do get still like inquiries of people who wants to start then it's you know really good athletes advanced athletes and they want to start straight away with a prep now this is obviously fine and all because you know they've been through the process before but it's always better to start outside of the prep phase now maybe people want to i don't know save money and just use it on prep this is not going to bring you to your best physique trust me when you only have a coach in prep and then in the off season you do your own thing you don't have a coach um this is not going to get you to your best you can have the best coach in the world i don't care um the spot where you build your physique which is most important because everyone wants pro cards everyone wants to do well in pro shows but they only want to get the help when it's time to prep and now they want to like switch that focus on and mm -hmm. everything where you know that's where you polish the physique that that's not where you build a pro worthy physique that is done outside of of stage um, that is done in the improvement phase and besides for the improvements when people start with me or with with us the what they've been doing before that food wise or where their health is or whatever the case is might not be in a good spot like their food might be too low and now they want to start a prep now what now you know we want to get that food as high as possible cardio is low they might start with you and cardio is already high and, and food low or whatever the case is so this gives us an opportunity to learn your physique first of all how it's responding before we go into prep um, secondly it allows us to get you in a, the healthiest place possible um, to make sure we make the right calls diet wise 
if it's someone enhanced PED wise, everything into that prep phase, but also, like I said, to make the necessary improvements uh, muscle wise, that is where it is done. It's not done in prep. So guys, you, I think 90% of you are not investing enough in the improvement phase. And like I said, people, they either don't want to spend money in improvement phase on extra coach or they don't want to, they want to take it as off time, just do their own thing. But if you are serious about this game, um, if you want to go far, that is the most important part is the time away from stage. I mean, so, that yes. is essentially where you will be making those improvements for your next stage look. So if you're not, <clears throat> you know, um, utilizing that time um, and being, you know, coached properly, um, you honestly may look the same. Again, exactly. when you stand on stage, you might bring the same look that you had before. And yeah. then um, that would be exactly why, because you didn't utilize your time in the off season wisely, you know, with the correct guidance mm. and coach um, to and take you to that next level. And just like in prep, the plan, it's important. It's also just as important in off season. You more, can't, yeah, I mean, no, oh, but I mean, by following a struct, a plan. Yeah. It's not something you can just wing because it's not prep now. Um, and I feel lots of people do this. And, you know, at the at the elite level, that's n nothing changes. It's just, you know, everything is, is like clockwork throughout the year um, during that. So that's why the people are at, at the level they are competing at. And if you go to international shows, you'll see more and more of this. The, the kind of level people bring to stage. And that's just why, because it's not because they have this coach or because they have this type of prep. It's because of the improvements they've done in the off season and just the time, the experience. Mm -hmm. You need to give yourself time. Yes, and um, let's t also touch on the importance of posing. You know what I mean? when. Um, when when <laughs> someone yeah, when someone joins you, whether they are new or whether they are experienced, I feel like um, you know this is something that that gets taken very lightly, um, and we in fact saw a lot of this come into play um, at the shows we attended last year. Um, you know what? So I always say when someone joins, they immediately sign up with. A, an experienced um, posing coach. Now, your PT at the gym, you know, who's, who might be coaching you, you know, um, that's not the way to go about it. That's, you know, you're not going to get the, the, um, the posing experience and guidance that you need from that person. You need to go to, to uh, an experienced pro I mean, posing coach that, that that actually does it for a living. You know what I mean? No, actually, someone that doesn't even do like full on coaching, coaching, they just focus on that. Yes. And we are very specific when it comes to this. Like there's a there's a handful of people we work with because I feel like bad habits, people learn bad habits yes. so quickly. And if you learn from the wrong, it's like starting your journey with the wrong coach as well, like very bad coach which is teaching you these bad habits um of doing you have to do this you have to do that then it's uh, difficult to get out of that same with posing like we've had advanced elite clients come to us um athletes and they are so good but then they struggle to change their posing because they're so used to how they used to do it and um, so to change that is it's actually harder to undo is. those those bad habits then to start from scratch. yeah it is so yeah we have a handful of people that we sort of work Trust, with yeah. yeah and we have people in the team only working with with our clients yes. um so that we can really have control over this and and how it's looking and get feedback from the actual coaches posing coaches helping so that we all can like so yeah it's very important guys yes um you know you need to you need to start as soon as possible um, with that, you know, the better you can pose, um, you know, even when it comes to, you know, 
you give me submitting your check in to your coach um you need to be able to pose your physique in the correct way so that we can make the necessary adjustments to your programming um to you know improve on your physique further because if you are not posing correctly in your poses you're not showcasing or in your, in your check in control that and you're not showcasing you know your all your body parts correctly it makes it very hard for us as Does. coaches to 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 really program that next step you know what i'm saying so so now that <clears throat> you're now that you've touched on that it's it is really important like we've seen people you know the the way you send your check-in pictures you must remember like we work from that so it's obviously if you're just coming into the game you knew it's different but you still need to learn posing and stuff like that but it's so important to learn your poses of your division asap because the sooner you can be in that poses a check in with us because if you're going to stand relaxed or if you're not going to pose correctly let's say you're a little bit more opened up um, or a little bit more skew or whatever the case is you're going to look totally different just like light you look different in different light like you can send us a check-in picture at five in the morning and you send us let's say it's fasted and you send us another fasted one at two o'clock in the afternoon no, midday those pictures are going to look totally different just because of the light so that's make that makes it difficult for coaches to make the, the necessary changes um, and you guys must remember i feel like a lot of time people send check-in pictures and check-ins to you same with the forms forms co copy and paste which we'll get to now <laughs> um they want to send a check-in in they just want to get it done with get the new plan go um guys if you sending a check-in in is the first step of having a success in whatever journey in the improvement phase of prep because that allows us to see have an accurate look on you to have accurate information about you how the week went where health is where food is whatever and to make the necessary changes for you to make the progress moving forward so before we get to the plan sending that pictures over even if it takes you an hour to do them over and over and over ask jess <laughs> she takes an hour to send me send me checking sometimes but it's so important that you send quality pictures over with the perfect light in your bikini or in your posing trunks um, not with your shorts that you pull up as a bodybuilder um, again that makes a massive difference having opposing trunks with a v pulling your shorts up go and look at your midsection it makes your midsection looks bigger than what it is there's so many things we can go in um, and in a, a cell phone I, and again i know everyone doesn't have money for iphone or whatever but try and have a quality phone because taking pictures with or off camera again makes it difficult for us and you're already investing money into a coach so don't it's waste your money you want to get the you want to get the most out of us to really get you to your best and it might sound simple but all these small things add up to getting you to where you need to be um it's so so important same with selfies you don't tell me that you're on holiday oh i didn't have time to send a check in yes i'm looking a selfie in the gym doesn't work guys um that is just someone that's not serious and not passionate about what they're doing all right honestly i mean if you are a serious athlete for me first of all your checking day should be the most the exciting and not day the next day or two of days your late. entire week right yeah um so you should be getting up earlier getting your your setup ready you know to take your check-in photos and you know you should enjoy that moment because honestly it's the moment for you as an athlete that you want you want to feel proud you know you want to be able to look at those photos be so excited to send it off to your coach be so excited to to receive the feedback on you know how the week wins and we seeing those changes come in mm. but if you're not even doing the basic the of effort. putting the effort and the time in to send those quality check-in photos like it says a lot about how you feel about this journey because, it does because honestly you know we are extremely passionate you know and we want to see you do your very best we want to enjoy this 
experience with you so much. But first and foremost, if you aren't caring enough about your check-in photos um, and the quality thereof, or even, um, you know... Question A. We've had clients that ask... <laughs> What, they miss their check-in, right? <laughs> and then JP mentioned the other day, someone asked him why didn't why didn't he check up on why they didn't check in? And, you know, things like that. I mean, if you are passionate about this and you want to get the return on your investment because you invested in us as coaches to get you to that next step, you paid for a service here, you know, you should be excited to do your check-in. You shouldn't have your coach... Ask you for check-ins. Ask you, because that already says a lot about how you feel about your investment you know, that you've made. Exactly, and I just... The way I see it, <clears throat> in this whole coaching process, it's very important for me to... It's not always something you can teach, but to teach discipline. Yes. You know, not just in, in this, but in, in life in general. Right. Um, it's important for me to, like, work my people mentally and their mindset to get it stronger. I really love doing that. And if I am going to ask you every week, like, can you send me your check-ins? And then where's your discipline? Like, if I don't ask you, and, you know, I've told this to that person as well, asking me, like, this is how you need to learn to be disciplined, is to do things on your time. And since she asked me that, she's not been missing a check-in. Um, sorry if you are watching. <laughs> but it's a good point to bring up. I mean, uh, She's not been happen. missing a check-in. She's been doing amazing, because we had a chat about the improvement phase and not messing around. She's been doing the best she's ever done before, honestly. And... You know, it's this is how you teach discipline to someone is by they need to stick to their check-in times. They need to check in on the check-in day, not two days after or when they feel like checking in. Um, because I feel like that's all comes down to discipline. Checking in on the day, doing your questionnaire as you should, doing your training as you should. You know, all that things is how you learn discipline and how you get stronger. And that's things that you take into life other 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 areas in your life as well that I feel like and I'm talking out of experience because we've walked the walked I've been there when I was with Cal when Cal was when I was checking in with him that's like the highlight of my of my week I just want to really push that week to see how my check-ins are going to look I can't even like describe how I how I'm feeling when I checked in and, and it's the first thing I do this feedback it was like it's the best so thing exciting. yeah because yes. that's how passionate I am about it and you know, I want to see if the if the hard work's paying off, how it's looking, where I can change, where I can right. improve on. Um, it's been, and I've had a full day booked, everything busy, and I still make sure I get that done first before my day starts. It's, it was just the best, it's the best time. So yeah, guys, it's, like I said, at the end of the day, we can only help you physique-wise, mentally-wise, everything-wise, if, if you... Our uh, communication is on point of us, your questionnaires, your check-ins. And if you, you know, do your part, 100% your part, that's how we can give our part 100% and even better to make sure you get the right plans. And you also learn through the process is um, just by doing everything like you're supposed to do it. That's how you're going to become the next Amazing. level of yourself. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah you oh you were talking about posing actually i wanted to uh, touch on that as well like i this is this is something very sad for me when i go to a show um and i see a client not a client because all my clients can pose but if you see someone on stage that's got crazy potential i'm like yo that is pro worthy this person needs to get a car today and they get on stage and they can't open their back or their gut is hanging out as a guy because they're posing unfit they start sweating and Shaking. the look changes yes. and for girls they're so stocky and stiff mm. the physique is there but there's absolutely no flow um it's sad to see because someone works so hard 
and you they can got see this it on their physique. pro worthy physique, but it's, the whole package oh, is just yeah. not there. And you just want to like tell the guy, change this, come on. You just want to help him. So, um, yeah, that's it's very very important the posing part, um, and you guys need to invest in this. Again, you know, even in the improvement phase, make sure you spend time with posing. I always have on my clients rest days normally like posing, posing, because even if it's twice or three times a week for 10 minutes, keep practicing posing. Don't leave it for four weeks out because one, you're going to be posing unfit for guys. You're going to sweat like crazy on stage. And no, you can't say it's because your coach don't know how to peak you. That's because you're unfit. <laughs> and um, let's be honest. I mean, if you leave your posing to four weeks out, four weeks out, you start feeling super low energy. You are And you're then tired, already they are fasting the posing. You honestly live in, you know, out of your tank <laughs> energy wise at that point. So you are, you, you're not going to invest, um, you know, the time and the effort into your posing as well as you could have done leading up to that, or even in your improvement phase, when your energy is high, food is high and you can have the best time. Honestly, guys, you need to prioritize your posing. The more you practice, the better you become like flow doesn't come natural. It doesn't just come out of nowhere. It comes with consistent, consistent posing. Mm. Then another thing that we need to touch on is stage presentation. So this is something that I feel we see this not enough. And we've actually seen this. This is, this being is mostly to girls now, especially bikini yes. girls. Yes, and we've seen this being awarded big time. This this can mean a make or break for you um, when it comes to maybe a first or second place decision, you know, for the judges. Because if both physiques are looking absolutely on point, the condition is on point, the balance is on point, but there's this one thing called stage presentation that can really, um, you know, determine that first or second place. And I feel um, that's definitely something that, um, you know, girls especially need to, you know, work on, you know, big time. Mm. Um, you know, especially, you know, this show, the show season starting, um, you know, and again, this is something that comes with consistent practice. Um, you only with consistent practice, do you start developing your confidence and also i do encourage um you to when you do practice practice in front of people yeah uh, because a lot of the times what i've seen happen is um you know especially new newbies to the sports they will practice with a with a posing coach they will practice at the gym you know in the studio by themselves they'll practice at home by themselves they'll practice you know, using their phone to film it and send that off to me. So essentially only the athletes, myself and the posing coach gets to see the posing, but they haven't had any posing experience in front of people. So no. come show day, they go, they get stage fright because now all of a sudden they're posing in front of a crowd of people which they're not used to, mm. and they get stage fright. So guys, I do encourage you, please, 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 do practice in front of people leading up to your show. The more, the better. Strangers, you know, pull some random strangers <laughs> at the gym if you need to. Um, just ask people to watch you pose, do your routine, and you'll see the more you do it in front of strangers, the more confident you will become, the better your flow will be. And essentially, that is what's going to, you know, add onto your, your stage presentation. Judges are very, like, particular when it comes to this. I think it's something that's not spoken about enough. Um, but you can see it quite evidently on stage. They call it the it factor. Let's put yourself quickly, just, you know, visualize that you're sitting and at the judges' table and you're looking at... 10 girls coming out now and let's say one of them has this crazy crazy flow um, and all the others are like stiff and makeup is off or bikini color doesn't match the hair or whatever um, just 
you're going to keep looking at that one with the flow. She might not have the best physique, but you're going to keep looking at her because she draws attention. Now, yes. that is what you want to do with judges. You want to you draw their t- attention. You, draw them in. you want them to look at you, and when you come on, they're like, wow. And when you're off, they want to be like, we want to see her again. We want to see her again. Boop, first yes. call out. They want to see you again. And, you know, they, they spoke about this at Olympia level with the judges, with people who, coaches who said Laura Lee was supposed to place lower than fourth. And they said they had in fourth because she was the best poser of the entire night. So she jumped like two placings or whatever, not saying it's different, but she ju- jumped two placings or so. And I almost think the head judge did say this, that yes. she jumped placings because of her posing. Um, so that just shows you, even at Olympia level, which is the highest level, you can jump one or two placings by posing better and having better flow and hide. And besides from the flow and stuff, you want to wa- hide your weaknesses and show your strength. So if someone has a little bit of a wider waist, it's always going to show, but you need to pose it in a way so that you don't show it to the judges, you know, or if someone has a, I don't know, maybe a imbalance somewhere, you need to learn to pose to hide that and to only show your strengths to the judges. So, so important. And, you know, at strong top lineups, that's what separates the normal normals to the, to the next level. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's. I, I feel like people think they just focused on diet and training when prep or when they prep for a show, it's all they focus on. And there's so many extra stuff that come into play, which helps you get to that next level. Um, It's really not, it's not just how you look, it's not just how the physique that you bring to stage. And this comes down to criteria that we talk a lot about as well. I feel like a lot of people, let's use Bikini Girls again, uh, they think they need to get as shredded as possible or their coach pushes them to be as shredded as possible, um, which is not the, the goal, the criteria for bikini on stage. So, and how many times have we seen people complain because the girl got third, but she's the leanest, but that's not what the criteria is, guys. So, end of the day, it's not just about pushing as hard as you can in the German diet to be lean on cardio. Um, there's a whole different angle and this is what your coach is supposed to like talk to you and 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 guide you through those process that process on the phases of what we're focusing on why what you need to do to make sure everything comes together and we have the best package that is that is a game plan you need to work that is that is fine detail i always talk about the detail work right it's not just the basics it's detail work yes, it's not that. it's not just about you know nailing stage condition for a show because essentially anyone out there can get you shredded and get you you know on stage but if you do not have the rest of those things in place um it it won't matter you 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 will still not do well because you don't have the rest that is needed um the, the balance in your structure um you know how you showcase your physique on stage um things like even Things like your makeup, your hair. I always advise, you know, never <laughs> try and do your makeup and your hair yourself. Always invest in the professionals. There are, you know, professionals that are experienced in stage hair and makeup. And this is not, not any we- makeup it's not artist. It's, makeup it's not wedding makeup. Yeah, it's not your day-to-day makeup. So don't go to someone that specializes in um, you know, shoot makeup or wedding makeup or day-to-day look makeup because it's not the same. It's even different federation-wise. IFBB yeah, and NPC is not the same here. So go yeah. and look at it, guys. You can't have this, what, what do they call it, the wave and like crazy volume yeah, and go on an NPC stage yeah, as a the, bikini. The, the looks in the, in the bikini for the different federations, they do vary. And it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's like JP says, it's the, those little details that come into play that your coach is supposed to guide you on, right? It's not just, like I say, it's not just about getting you peeled for stage. It's about 
small little details which you think might be small with like your how your makeup look is going to look for show day how your bikini is going to look it's the things that's going to make you win strong lineups like yes. normal new basic small show lineups you might win with just having that but yes. when it comes to really strong lineups and if you really want to go far in this yeah then then they try to start looking at the, the, the finer, finer detail because that's essentially what's going to separate five brilliant physiques on stage because you will eventually get to a point where you will be amongst very 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 imagine at the olympia level the top 10 how good are they how close are they like nobody else can separate them except the judges and this is the finer detail we're talking about. That is where you need to the, have the head judge of the Olympia literally said on that podcast we watched that um, if you have one step even wrong, it gets so close that even in your uh, in your walk, if the one step is maybe off or something small that sounds like stupid, they can maybe that can maybe be a call because it's so close, and that can maybe be a call of bringing you one placing down. Yes. because they're so close on that level so everything needs to be on point on so point. guys do invest in those details because every single detail add up and they all matter at the end of the day um you know if your coach is not discussing the the finer details with you um, ask them ask them exactly get the correct uh, you know guidance for it and and please do invest in the professionals the professionals right hand as a professional um you know hair and makeup artists um get quality bikini suits made again you can see the difference between uh, a cheap suit and a, you know a quality suit on stage because they um show up very differently on stage you know quality and again suits. all these all these things might be extra money and it's looking like a lot but just think about it for a second you really want to already invest already go through an improvement phase a prep phase focusing on winning and being the best and then get to stage and they tell you you can't pose or mm. you lost because of your bikini or for a guy your cut was hanging out you're posing unfit guys then you trust me you're going to look back and you'll be like i i should have just spent that money get the help i needed or yes. put the extra effort into my posing smaller details then you're going to look back and you're going to be extremely extremely sad about it <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah so i think that's enough about that you wanted to talk about oh because we had people we had we spoke about when people don't make progress throughout the year yeah so um for instance um an example what if you have an athlete that looks uh exactly the same um a year ago compared to this year um you know why has not why hasn't there been any progress made now this is a thing that we've seen happen on stages before where you know we've seen athletes compete on stage and then one year later they're on stage again they look exactly it's the same, the same. why <laughs> is there no progress so let's speak speak over those things yeah so firstly i think one it's the big thing we always talk about people don't take the improvement phase serious enough because mm -hmm. again I, f I feel like I'm not sure if it's because maybe social media pressure also it plays a role. Because how many girls have you seen stay lean on social media, um, and they want to have this physique because they have sponsorships and they think they have to be this lean, which obviously it, I make it makes sense the pressure they they have on on social media, and then they don't really want to do the improvement phase how they're supposed to do it maybe. So that's also where they just focus on the prep side of things. Yeah. And they look the same every single show. Um, so in my opinion, if you follow, if you follow the plan throughout the year, the off season, the on season, and you really put in the work, you don't mess around. It's impossible not to make progress. I'm going to say it. It's impossible. Like they, there's you, whether you're a natural or enhanced, you there will be progress on stage. Yes. 
So either you need to look at maybe for guys or everyone, girls, your training intensity might not be where it's supposed to be. Now, this is a big one. We always talk about it. And someone asked me on my Q&A a while ago, the top three, what was it, the, t the top three problems I see in, in bodybuilding. And one was, it's definitely people don't know how to train. Like a lot of people don't know intensity. Now, if you, for example, you can have 10 exercises for the day. You can have four exercises for the day. I have athletes that's doing five exercises, let's say on that one day, and they struggle with recovery. You know, that's how intense they train, five exercises. Then you have someone else coming to five. Coach, I did four extra exercises. It felt like there wasn't enough. Yeah, because you don't train hard. Oh. That is why. I literally have five exercises sometimes for people and they tell me my recovery it's i'm struggling like the next session even for those people that feel that they can train seven days a week i it's yeah I not training hard enough it means yeah, yes right it, it clearly means that they, there's not enough intensity behind your workouts because if you are training hard enough trust me your body will be thanking you for two rest days yeah it's, it's really going to be like that. And, you know, I, again, I spoke to Ada yesterday when we were doing legs and we were on the pendulum squat and it was our second exercise, feeling ready, feeling so good to go into this and for the session. First working set on the squat afterwards, I tell him, I'm I'm, I feel done. I don't know how am I going to continue the session. If you take one set to true failure, something like a like a squat mm. or deadlift or whatever, you're going to feel so roast after that. And that is where I always tell people like you need to work to failure. I'm not talking about like when it starts burning and uncomfortable or your plan says 12 and then you stop on 12, but you can actually do three more until you hit failure. Failure is where you cannot perform a full rep on its own. So when you get to 10 or whatever the number is, and that final, final set, you really, or two, two reps, you really struggle to get that full rep out. Yeah. That is when you start eating failure. And then you even do two partials maybe to finish it off. Mm -hmm. If it's like cable work or whatever the case is. Um, that is true failure and that is where you're going to see the next level. You don't need more exercises, guys. You just need to learn how to train. Absolutely. And again, it comes down to, you know, programming. You do not need to change your training program every week. No. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, for you to be able to excel in those movements and be able to make significant growth progress um, in your training specifically you honestly have to um, the only way you can do so is by constantly doing that movement week after week after week and progressing each week now when it comes to progressive overload it doesn't mean you have to load weight every single week because mm. it if you're doing it correctly, you, it's not always going to be possible. Yeah. So you can still make progress in terms of, you know, your time and attention. Um, One and rep more, maybe. A few reps more on the same weight. Obviously, you know, just keep your form in mind, guys. Even just how you feel. Sometimes it's the same weight, the same reps, but it's more comfortable this week than it was last week. You can feel like you're moving it better. Yes. And your the connection, form is better. The connection your, is better. Your form and your connection is better. So that way also you are, you know, making progress. But trust me when I say you are not going to make, be making any kind of progress if you are const constantly changing up your training program or you asking your coach every two weeks, oh, you know, I'm a bit bored with my program. <laughs> Can we get something else? Those movements are in there for a reason, for your physique to be able to, you know, go to that next level. And if you are getting bored with your workouts, you know, it means that you're not actually um, 
passionate even if about you just, to, to, to really make those improvements on your physique because they're there for a reason. Even if you just change the routine, if you move squats from second to fourth or leg press from third exercise to second, it's going to have an impact on the load that you have on there. It's going to have an impact on how it's working your muscle because your quads might now be more f fresh when you start the leg press, where mm -hmm. next week you move it, now it might be like totally slammed by the time you get to the leg press. So the weight is off, the form is off, how you feel the connection in your muscle might be off. Uh, so all these small things play have a, have a big impact on in the in the training with progress and stuff like that. So yeah, it's training intensity is a, is a big problem for most that they need to learn and forget about what you see the 20 million following person on social media do or maybe Chris Bumstead or <laughs> because he's Chris Bumstead you want to follow his split I've been there when I was years ago <laughs> when he got into the game guys it's don't don't look at the fancy stuff learn the basics first nail the basics your training program that's given to you by your coach nail that a hundred percent don't look for fancy stuff don't say uh, this Olympian says that I shouldn't do hip thrust because it makes my waist look bigger. No, that's literally the only person in the Olympia stage that doesn't do hip thrust. Every single other one does it. And she doesn't do it because she's got genetically amazing glutes and a small waist. So some people have the world's best genetics and they can't train. They absolutely have no idea of training intensity. They're on the Olympia stage because of their genetics. Um, unfortunately that that is how it goes so you can't be looking at the way they're training sometimes I'm not saying this is everyone but there yeah. is one or two I know and you can't say okay. that you need to follow this plan because they are doing it because when they, they have world-class genetics and you don't and 99.9% .9 of people do not have the genetics to be on the Olympia stage we actually spoke about this the other day JP brought up a very good point and he was like, if you do not have good genetics, you will, you will never be on the... You won't on be on the Olympia, Olympia stage. stage. You won't. It is, it is the truth. It's sad, but it's true. Yeah. Like someone can train at 50% and someone else can train killing themselves at 100 day in and day out and they're never going to see that stage um, because they don't have the genetic build for it. Now, if you look at yourself now, don't think like, oh, I don't have the genetic build to go to Olympia. Sometimes... We've had clients, you've had how many clients starting from lifestyle going into show and they were like, is this the same person? Like it's like the whole genetic structure changes, but it's just because they've never like really trained properly, done the right plan to see in what direction their genetics go. Like yes. sometimes it changes quite a lot. So it's just having the best plan, putting the effort in and, and you know, keep going after it. And be realistic with your goals in the game. Aim high always, but if you don't reach it, don't stay down. Keep going after them. But be realistic, guys. Yes, that's the most important part. Is set, you know, realistic goals for yourself. And and I feel everyone wants quick results. They want, you know, the fastest. The shortest way to get there yeah and you know even the best in in the world it's it's years years and years, it. Yeah. And years of grinding it consistency they might only make a name for themselves now but they've already been 15 years at it which you didn't see yes so for, yeah right so for no one you know it's overnight success you know even achieving a pro card is something that takes time people need to be realistic for most there's there's that unless you've one got that smashes unless you're genetic genetics. free <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's um, why people people compare can, themselves with others who get like a pro card in one show I've achieved that um, in two years, so I can too. and they don't realize their genetics is different yes the time frame will be different you know exactly. they think oh this person has this coach so 
definitely possible in one show, my first show or second show. And then they get upset because... Yeah, because guys, so it's your journey. It's you need to be on your own mission and compare it to someone else. And your coach needs to be open with you about this on, you know, the timeline and things realistic we need to aim for. And you just need to trust that coach communicate and you just need to keep going. That's all. And Enjoy you it. know, for the year, like sit, just to touch again on setting yourself that realistic goals, I feel a lot of people, uh, you know, once they achieve their pro card, they think that they're going to smash it at their pro debut, achieve first call outs, win the show. Um, we, I, f I feel like just be re realistic with yourself, get into your pro debut and go open and go into it with an open mind. See where you stack up against the pros because the thing it's is, it's a different league. You need, in order to make the necessary progress to be, go where you want to go. Let's say you got your pro card now it's to get feedback you can mm. i feel like you can't take feedback first of all there's a difference between a person judging pro shows and a person judging amateur shows the feedback maybe they're in the same level but you need to get feedback from people at pro level once you are become a pro secondly when you stand in a lineup at your pro qualifier when you get a card the people standing around you is different when you stand in a pro show, the people around you is going to be a way, way higher level. You're going to look different. You can literally have the same physique, stand in a weak lineup, stand in a strong lineup. You are going to look different because the people you stand next to changes how you look. And this is why it's important to get feedback on your debut at that first show. The quickest you can, like, the soonest you can get feedback from that, the better you can move forward and plan. Because yes, we can maybe see your coach and an athlete and the pro qualifying judges can maybe tell you you need to work on your glutes or for a guy you need to get bigger chest, more density on your back. And everyone can see it, but, and you can work on that before you do the pro, the pro show, but you still need to stand there to get that extra feedback, to see how far you are away from that quality, because you might stand there now and looking on social media or on wherever, you don't understand what the quality is at till you actually stand there. Yes. You know, and it's same as a coach, you can maybe coach your athletes to be, to become the next big thing in the pro league, but if you as a coach are not seeing enough of that pro show levels overseas, I feel like <laughs> there's like a line and not you or the athlete understands what the quality is at, where the quality is at at that level. And I feel like for a coach and for athletes, it's very important to know and to see that, mm. to know where they work towards. I mean, the first time when I went to worlds for ifbb and the first time i've been at the pro league show internationally i was like blown away i'm like this is much bigger than what i thought and i just got that drive and hunger of i need to dominate yeah <laughs> and yeah that's it opens up your eyes and i feel like if you're not going to see it yourself you're never going to understand it and as a coach you might coach an athlete that got their pro card and you might think and tell them like, oh, we're getting a win this year, but you do not understand the quality. Trust me, it is insane. And once you understand that quality, I feel like you can guide them in a better way, uh, mentally and physically. You can move things in a, in a different pace and way um, once, you, once you see that. And for an athlete, it's just, I always tell people, the more you can compete internationally, the better because it it just eats different like the more you stand at international shows the better you're gonna get the stronger your mind's gonna get you're gonna get back home after seeing that quality and the drive is gonna be absolutely through the roof if you're passionate about it yes. you're gonna be so so hungry to make that progress to be there because you got that feeling of how it is to be on that stage now and i like i i need to be that first call out um so I feel like mentally it's a it's a very, very positive big, shift big for someone up. competing internationally. Yeah. Um, 
And this is if someone is really passionate and, and stuff because you will get people that go home and they're very negative because they didn't get that first call out. But guys, if you're really serious about this and you love it, uh, you love training, you will go home with hunger so to really work to be at that level. And I can tell you now it's like training on your own and having that one person that tells you, come on, you got two more. And then you work that two more. That's the that's the change. It's like standing on amateur, being at the pro at a pro show um, internationally, or just amateur international show compared to locals. The same. You have that extra two more. You have that extra in your mind of you need to do that extra. Um, it's just a something you can't explain what it does mentally. And then again to get that feedback. It's a stronger lineup. You look different in a stronger lineup, and you can back, go back home with There's so much a better take plan away in place. that you get from being on that international level stage. Um, you know, there's so much that you learn from that experience. And you definitely have a bigger, bigger chance of building a career out of it yes. by just staying local. That's never going to happen. You're never going to get proper sponsorships. And this is now for people at the really next level. That's You need to go internationally to to be at that level it's the only way it's Absolutely. not gonna happen staying staying at home <laughs> nothing happens staying at home <laughs> don't get comfortable <laughs> um so yeah so not making progress is definitely look at your training intensity first uh, make sure that you really follow your improvement phases guys make sure and you know it's it's fine to have that little bit of balance i always tell people it's i'm not saying like you need to be a robot mm. but you really need to really work in your improvement phases because a lot of people don't and this is where everything is built so make sure your training intensity is hard make sure you communicate with your coach because end of the day your coach is going to help you get to where you need to be by changing things yourself not talking to your coach he won't be able to give you the right plans because he has absolutely no idea what you're actually doing so communicate with them work together because that's the only way you're going to become the next next version, the next, next level version. of yourself. Um, so that's key, following the improvement phase, um, making sure you eat all your food if your coach has you on a lot of food in the improvement phase and not eating half of it. <laughs> yes, and very important, guys, you need again to be open and transparent with your coach. Exactly. You can't say that you are eating all the food, but meanwhile, you know you're cutting out like two of your carb meals completely because you don't want to get, you don't want to eat carbs because you don't want to um, yeah. gain, you know, or whatever the case might be. But it, uh, it does like change the, the whole like, you know, game plan that we have in place for yeah. you. You know what I mean? We want to see you might bring, you know, those improvements to your next stage. And we can't if you've been, um, if you're not being open and honest with, exactly. with us. Exactly. Imagine you eat, you're on 5,000 calories, you're only eating three, five. Now your weight's staying the same mm -hmm. or it's dropping. Oh, now I'm going to increase your food. Still a little bit more. Now I'm going to increase your food again. After a while, I'm like, are you sure you're eating all your food? Because mm -hmm. I don't think you are. No, I'm eating all my food. Then what can I do if I actually know you're not, but you don't want to talk to me? So guys, for us to really help you, for any coach out there to really be their best for you, you need to be open with them. Communication is key. It's always key. Yes. Um, and again, you know, I mean, you can only make that consistent progress and those, those big changes if you are, you know, consistent with one coach. Because... Being consistent with one coach. Just don't coach. be consistent with the wrong coach. Uh, yes. <laughs> Being consistent with one coach long term gives them, like you said before, you can literally study how their body works from the inside out on everything throughout the season, throughout the year, and all the phases that you are. When you are constantly changing coaches, you're literally starting new every time with that coach so that coach needs to learn how everything works now you need to do everything from scratch again so again a lot of time a lot of progress is lost yeah yeah it's very important guys like i said make sure you have the right coach for you that if you make progress if you are very healthy um 
you're getting better every time mentally you're feeling good communication is good attention to details yeah you're not waiting two weeks for a check-in reply uh, make sure you're happy with all your boxes with your coach and then stick to them guys give them the time work with them and trust me if they're the right person you will know um and it's really going to take your physique to a whole new level the people from my team our team that's been doing the best it's always the one that we've been working with for a while eh? yes like really it's been and i mean let's be honest most of our clients are with us for long for like years and years yeah if i could call it that we don't we don't we don't have clients that's yeah like it's on really and off leave. or yeah um we do have clients that join and then and then they'll the seats not for them or they something don't yeah or whatever. then obviously. they leave but um we kind of i think like we've kind of had that you know consistent consistency with our clients where you know our clients stick with us long term because that's why they're doing so good so yes. it's not because there's a fancy things we do now and then or that's magic <laughs> the, wind, the wind squad protocol is magic by the way but <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah it's just consistency guys and being trusting your coach it's yes. massive 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 and making sure both both is taking the goal serious like for me yeah. if a client has this goal it's my goal i want to achieve that i need to <laughs> um so yeah guys make sure make sure you trust them communicate with them and yeah i'm excited for the year it's going to be a big one we got we got quite a few trips planned and and stuff this year i've got a few doing pro qualifiers internationally which i'm very very excited for and quite a big group and pro shows also few big shows locally so yeah we were very excited for a big yeah it's gonna be amazing are you ready i'm so ready <laughs> <laughs> are you ready <laughs> yeah um, it's gonna be good anything else you wanted to touch on i think that was all but sure guys um if you have any questions with with anything that we spoke of or if you would like us to um, speak and elaborate or go into more detail about something specific something that's um, you know that's been bothering you or that you have questions on please drop it down in the comments below we'll be happy to you know go into more detail about it on ya um, to give you a better understanding and explanation on, on that yeah the podcast is really to connect with more people and to Help educate you. and help whether you're a client or not a client and client it doesn't matter the more we can help the better yes. so yeah let us know what you want us to touch on we might put a q a on again the next time and then put the put the questions in there we won't mention your name or anything don't worry <laughs> um, but yeah just so we want to know what you guys want to hear more of so that we can help um, and also to grow our channel help us grow the channel so please share it will be amazing and like um, subscribe yeah so, that we, so <laughs> that we can keep going after this um, but yeah guys thanks for tuning in and we are excited for a lot of big new things this year for you guys that we're doing um, we're excited for the podcast we'll probably maybe look at a guest soon as well bring some fun extra fun into the to the table um, yes. we'll see if you guys have any like if you guys want to see anyone specific that's in dubai let us know and we'll try our best let's see if we can make it happen but yeah guys keep training hard let us know if there's anything and remember to comment team monster team starbucks um let's see <laughs> and have a powerful week and year make let's dreams reality and let's go for it Peace out.